Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is part three of working through the Arasaka machine over on Hack Smarter. This was created by Henry Lever, AKA Harrison Wells. A huge shout out to him. Really well done, really excellent Active Directory machine. Now this is part three. So if this is the first video that you are watching, I strongly recommend you begin with part one, then go to part two and then go to part three. Otherwise you might feel a little bit lost. Additionally, you learn a lot by watching me. You learn even more by hacking alongside of me. So if you do not have a subscription to Hack Smarter, you are missing out. It's incredibly affordable for you to sub and then you can hack right alongside of me. All that being said, let me share my screen and let's dive in. So if you remembered at the end of the previous video, we compromised this Yoro Nobu user, if I'm saying it correct, and we changed his password to HackSmarter123. And we verified up here that the password change was successful. He does not have any interesting access to shares, but let's continue enumerating this Yoronobu user to see what access he might have in the environment. We'll go back over to Bloodhound. I'm gonna click into Yoronobu. And I will move my face so I'm not blocking it for you guys. And over on the right side, we can see that Yorinobu has outbound object control as well over a user called Soul Killer Service. I'm just gonna pull this over here. I want it so I can see the generic right, but I want it for my screenshots. And let's go ahead and grab a screenshot of this. And we will say, your Renobu has generic write permissions over soulkiller.service, which will allow us to do a few, actually a few different attacks to get access. Why does it not paste? You guys saw me take that screenshot, right? Let's try this again. There we go. Read it Arkansas for the longest time, or Arkansas, not Arkansas, Arkansas. I love it. Arasaka, Arkansas, it's the same thing. All right, now, just like previously, if you didn't know what that means, you can click into the edge, kind of the really powerful thing about Bloodhound. And first, we can look at general and we can say our user has generic write access. This gives us the ability to write any non protected group, so we can do a targeted Kerberos attack. If we go to Linux abuse, you can actually see it right there. We can do either a targeted Kerberos attack or a shadow credentials attack. Let's do a targeted Kerberos attack. It says a tool will automatically attempt a targeted Kerberos attack either on all users or against a specific one if specified in the command line and then obtain a crackable hash. The cleanup is done automatically as well. And it gives us the Python script. I don't think Correct me if I'm wrong, for those of you in the live stream, I don't think you can do a targeted Kerberos attack via NetExec and modify the SPN and such. Maybe you can. I don't think you can though. Yeah, I don't believe so. So we'll go to the shutdown repo. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, the code. I'm gonna copy it to my clipboard, go over to my terminal, we'll git clone it. We'll CD over to targeted Kerberos, LS, and let's go ahead and set up a Python virtual environment so we don't break all of our Python packages. So we'll do Python 3-M virtual environment. We'll call it my environment. And then we're gonna source my environment, bin activate. And now we're in a Python virtual environment. So when we install these requirements and such, it won't break our other Python packages. Let's do pip3 install dash r requirements dot text. And I should probably add all of this to our notes as well. So let me go to our notes and we will say h3. Gosh, Notion is slow for some reason for me. Targeted Kerberos attack. We get cloned right and then we ran all those commands to set up our python virtual environment and install all the needed packages so i'll just copy that all 
All right, and now we hopefully have the tool installed. Let's find out if we LS and we do Python 3 targeted Kerberos dash H, we don't get any error, so that's a good sign. And if we jump back over to Bloodhound, we can go ahead and grab the syntax. And I'm just gonna type out the syntax here and we'll kind of fill in what we need to fill in. Targeted Kerberos, well, our domain is gonna be hacksmarter.local. Our controlled user is going to be, uh, who is our controlled user again? <laughs> I've compromised too many users, Yorinobu. Yorinobu and Yorinobu's password is, is that the one we reset? Hacksmarter123. And then we wanna specify the user that we compromised, which it says we can pass it on the command line. and operate targeted Kerberos scene, target domain, users file, request user. Let's try the request user flag. And the user we wanna request is soulkiller.service. And then we'll just put it single quotes as well to keep it consistent. I don't think they would actually be needed though at, at this point. And let me pull myself back over here because I just realized I was blocking half of the screen. Anyways, this looks good to me. Targeted Kerberos, domain, our controlled user, and then the request user. Run it with Python 3. Boom. And we were successful, ladies and gentlemen, with our targeted Kerberos attack of this service account. Now, just like before, we're gonna go ahead and attempt to crack this hash. So I'm gonna copy all of it. I'll just back out and I'm gonna do nano soul killer hash dot text, paste it in, save it, hash cat soul killer user share wordless rock you dot text. Take a drink of water and hope it cracks. Well, Arkansas, are we hacking the state? The whole thing. The government shut down, so now we're on the offense. And if you missed the previous hashcat command, I'll explain this real briefly while we wait. Hashcat, if you've never used it, is a tool for cracking password hashes. I explained Kerberosing in the previous video, but the TLDR is we were able to update the service principal name, which allows us to pull down the target users, or in this case, a service account. It's a ticket, a Kerberosing ticket, that is encrypted with the user's hash. And because we have the ticket encrypted with the user's hash, we can then try to crack the hash offline and retrieve the user's clear text password, which is exactly what we're doing with this command right here with Hashcat, specifying the target hash, and then rockyou.txt is a password word list with a bunch of different passwords, and then we're gonna see if we can crack the user's hash. And you can see we were able to, we have the users hashed right there. So let's add all of that to our notes. We'll say cracking the users hash. I'm gonna grab the syntax for our hashcat command. And then the users hash was some weird my password thing. Pretty secure password there. We got even a hashtag at the end, wow. All right, let's see if that actually works for our user. We'll do net exec SMB. And instead of Yarnobu, we're gonna do soul killer or something. Soul killer dot service, I think. Yeah, soul killer dot service. And then I'm just gonna copy this password because I'm gonna type it wrong. We'll go to this user's password and let's just see if authentication is successful. We are recording part three, yes. All right, and we were able to confirm that the credentials do work and we have successfully compromised another user. So let's make another H2 and we will say enumerating from soul killer that service account. And let's once again, drop in his creds here so it's easy for us to access soul killer .service, and then this password. 
And let me just show you guys real quick what I like about Notion and why I do all these headers. If we scroll to the top of Notion, we have this nice page. I do this on a real pen test as well, so I can very quickly see everything that I've done. So you can see our enumeration, enumerate from those accounts. Now we're on soulkiller.service account and we're enumerating as him or her. Or I guess it's neither, it's a service account, it's not even a person. But let's check out Soul Killer Service. Scroll down and we can see that Soul Killer Service does not have any outbound object control. I'll move my face so you can see here. We have no outbound object control and we're not a member of any interesting groups. And I don't think we saw any interesting shares. So that's kind of my order of enumeration. Number one, I always see, hey, does our user have access to any shares? If we have read access to a non-standard share, we might be able to find something sensitive such as credentials. If we have write access to a share, we can upload a .link file, spin up responder, and potentially steal another user's hash. If we don't have that, then I use Bloodhound and I see, hey, in our, does our user have any like write permissions in Bloodhound that we can compromise another user? You've seen us abuse that over and over and over again. When none of those things work, another thing to always check is Active Directory Certificate Services. These are often misconfigured even in the real world. And if they're misconfigured, we can abuse that to get full domain compromise. Now, I actually believe that we can now enumerate that directly from Bloodhound. If that doesn't work, I think we can use NetExec. If that doesn't work, we can use Certify AD, which is built into Kali. And the reason I have so many tools is when it comes to doing ethical hacking for your actual job, you need to be able to know how to perform the same attack, but multiple different ways. I'll give you a real world example of this. I am on an internal pen test right now during the day for a client but I'm not able to use Linux. And Linux is my primary OS because their VPN client only works with Windows. So I'm limited to using a Windows VM for an internal pen test, which isn't ideal. But I know enough about Windows that I was able to then install WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux, then install Kali within Windows, then configure the networking for WSL to pass through the VPN. So I still am able to use Kali Linux from my Windows machine via the Windows VPN to do the pen test for the client but it's being able to balance and troubleshoot and have multiple different ways to solve things so that when you run into a limiting factor in a real engagement or an exam, you can quickly pivot. So let's go ahead and first try to use Bloodhound to see if we can enumerate certificate services. I think the queries are built into Bloodhound. Hey, oh, Supercharged Hardware, the C2 course has all of its own custom labs. It has over 20 custom labs. You get 80 hours of lab time for those labs. Anyways, let's jump over to our saved queries. And like I said, I think you can actually query certificate services from Bloodhound. Yeah, so we can do some of them. So we can check like ES1, hit run, and we have no results. We can check ESC2. Okay, no results. This probably works better if you just use Certify. Um, is that trying to do anything? It's not saying no results, but also not doing anything either. No results match your criteria. All right, uh, let's try NetExec. I've never actually used NetExec to query for certificate services. I always use Certify AD, but I think NetExec has the functionality and I'm just curious how it works. Is it only only one of them? Can you only check ESC8 with NetExec? Oh, Harrison Wells says it only works if you already have certificate data, which I think only comes from Sharp Hound. That makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and use Certify AD because that's the one I'm most familiar with. Let me go to this terminal here. Uh, Certify AD is actually built into Kali Linux. You don't have to install it but I still forget the syntax for it all the time. And that's the thing I try to remind people. It's not super important to remember syntax for tools. It's important to know when to use the tool, but you can always look up the syntax. And Certify actually has a really good Wikipedia, not Wikipedia, but Wiki, 
that gives you syntax as well as how to abuse each one of the different certificate service vulnerabilities. So if we look at our CertiPy wiki, we can go to usage and it will give you an example right here, but I think we want to do, I think it's dash vulnerable to only show the vulnerable ones. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll do certify ad find dash u uh, soul killer dot service at hack smarter dot local dash p. I don't remember the user's password. Dash p like that, and then we'll do dcip. And if I ping hack smarter dot local, we have our domain controller IP right there. Oops. Domain IP. We can do text enabled uh, hide admins and then dash vulnerable to only show the vulnerable certificate services and hit enter. I may have messed up the syntax there. We will find out. But right now it's enumerating these different ones. And the web enrollment timed out, that's fine. May not have web enrollment. Okay, and it saved a text file. If we LS, we can see our text file right here. And you can actually see this right here for our current user. It is vulnerable to ESC1. It says enrollee supply subject and template allows client authentication. And the user that is able to enroll is soulkiller.svc, which is the user that we have compromised. Let's add a bunch of information to our notes because we'll do another H2 and we'll say enumerating ADCS with soulkiller.service. And let's drop this information in here. Now I'm just gonna copy this full output so we have everything that we need to perform the attack. Well, you know what, I need to show the syntax. Like how did I how did I actually get this information? Let's grab this for our notes first and show our syntax. So if we're on an exam later on, we can remember how we've done this in the past. And then I'll copy the full output. And paste it in. I'm totally following you, Tyler. Oh man. All right, let's uh, look at certificate services. Now the cool thing about their Wikipedia, or the, why do I keep calling it Wikipedia? Their wiki is they outline each one of the attacks. So if we go to privilege escalation here, we can click into ESC1. And it is the stereotypical ADCS misconfiguration that can lead directly to PrivS. The vulnerability arises when a certificate template is inadequately secured, permitting a low privilege user, that's us, to request a certificate and importantly, specify an arbitrary identity such as a domain admin within the certificates SAM. This allows the attacker to impersonate any user, including administrators. So we can impersonate a domain admin. And so we've already identified it. And now it says how to exploit with CertiPy. It involves two main steps. We're gonna request a certificate using the vulnerable template, and then we're gonna use the obtain certificate to authenticate as the user. So it says attacker, blah, 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 uses this syntax. I'm just gonna copy all of this right here. And well, we'll read through it first. So we're gonna, of course, request a certificate. We should see the expected output snippet we can authenticate using the obtain certificate. The attacker now uses the generated administrator.pfx file with certify auth. And then we have the expected um, output. And then we can authenticate, of course, with that. And then we have some mitigation information. But you know what would be good? What would be good is for you to try this on your own. I'm looking over the time. We're at about the 20 minute mark again on this recording for part three. Part four, we're just gonna abuse the certificate service, but I really do want you to try this. You're gonna learn a lot just by stumbling around. So you may not be able to figure it out right away, but I want you to try this. I've showed you the syntax. There's a few things you have to figure out like the SID, but I believe in you. I believe you can do it. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna conclude this part three of working through the Arasaka machine. 
but I want you to try to abuse ESC1 and get domain admin. If you're not able to do it, that's totally fine. Join me in the next video and it'll be a shorter video where I walk you through this specific attack path, but try it on your own first and see how far you can get and then join me and we'll work through it together. So, hey, thank you for watching. Good luck. Happy hacking.